Colorado's voters may have legalized the use of recreational marijuana, but you won't be able to buy it in retail shops until next year. Some users don't want to wait, and they're already growing their own legally. Jim Spellman reports. Chloe Villano, a longtime marijuana advocate, voted along with 55% of Colorado voters to legalize pot in last year's election. Who's this? Rudy Villano. Rudy has a little uh, <laughs> pot leaf collar. Yeah, it's hemp, yeah. It's made out of hemp. What do you like about, about smoking cannabis? Um, I just like the way it makes me feel, like as far as like pain. Did you like the blueberry or no? But Colorado is in a sort of holding pattern. State law allows possession of small amounts of marijuana, and it's available in dispensaries for medical marijuana patients. But it won't be sold in retail stores until next year. It is, however, now legal to grow your own cannabis, and that is exactly what Chloe is doing. Let's see her grow. Okay. Let's go. So this is, this is not a big apartment. You're still able to grow marijuana in here? Yes. You just have to make sure that you can control the smell. Even here in your bedroom in this apartment, you can grow marijuana? Yes. I mean, this huge tent is full of 12 plants. Let's have a look. Wow. You're growing these 12 marijuana plants right here in your one-bedroom apartment in Denver. Yes, sir. Chloe works as a consultant for the medical marijuana industry, and as a medical marijuana patient, Chloe is allowed to grow up to 12 plants. Non-patients can grow six. I'm definitely what I would call a cannabis connoisseur. So, you know, as a patient and as somebody who enjoys the plant, I definitely know good cannabis and I grow some of the best cannabis. People like Chloe are flocking to the grow store, where they help people set up and maintain home marijuana grows. Yeah, General Manager sure. Ted Smith says it's not just new growers, but a different kind of grower. Well, what are the new demographics? Who, who are uh, the new people coming We have this? a lot of uh, married couples. We have uh, a lot of 40 and up, 50 and up, and 60 and up uh, individuals coming in. Some enjoy growing as a hobby. Some grow for the sake of discretion. Everything happening in the privacy of their own homes. And others just want to grow the highest grade weed they can. In today's culture, they want absolutely the finest quality product with uh, the least of, you know, uh, inconsistencies. For between $150 and $500, the grow store will set the grower up with the equipment needed to grow about a pound of marijuana every 12 weeks. It's illegal to grow cannabis outdoors in the view of others, so growers need a light source, ventilation, maybe an air filter to keep the smell away from the neighbors, soil, and nutrients for the soil. Some of the materials are the same used to grow more conventional plants, but some of these products have a distinctly stoner vibe. So this product is called Cushy Cush and is a blossom booster. That means you would Growing marijuana in your basement or bedroom may be legal, but it's not exactly easy. I tell our customers that uh, if you're just getting into the, f the fray, if you will, that they will be MacGyver within six months because you will have so many different hurdles that you've never considered. Chloe Villano says her MacGyver marijuana grow is worth it. She hopes her cannabis consulting business will continue to grow, and even when retail stores open, Chloe says she'll keep growing and smoking her homegrown weed. So is it comforting to wake up every morning in your bed looking at your marijuana plants? Awesome. We go to bed together, we wake up together. It's Jim so Spellman, CNN, Denver. All right, so voters said yes to legalizing pot in Colorado. Now lawmakers are finessing legislation to help determine who can grow it, uh, where it can be sold, and how it might be taxed. Uh, there's a whole lot of activity in the legislature to resolve all of this before the end of this legislative session, which is next week. Assistant Majority Leader of the Colorado House of Representatives, Dan Pavone, joins me now from Denver. Good to see you, Representative. Nice to be with you this afternoon. So you authored the bill uh, known as 1317. Uh, what are the proposals to regulate growing and selling pot that you have crafted? Well, we, we did three things when we crafted this proposal. We wanted to make sure that we protected the public safety and that we kept this out of the hands of kids, criminals, and cartels. So what does that mean? It means that these are going to be private uh, entry, uh, businesses where you're going to have to show a 21 and up uh, ID to enter. You're going to, uh, the product is going to be in uh, childproof packaging with labeling and potency requirements. Uh, it's a very robust uh, regula regulatory environment that we're having. 
uh, to purchase this starting January 1st, 2014. And so in January 2014, does it mean conceivably that someone can walk into a store where they might be able to find, you know, bubble gum or, um, or coffee, and then there'll be a, a designated area for a pot as well? No, the stores that we're thinking about are only going to be allowed to sell marijuana type products that can't be confused with marijuana. So this is going to be a very separate store that you're not, this isn't going to be a 7-Eleven or something easily uh, accessible to children and, and those who don't want to be exposed to this. You're going to have to go into a private facility to uh, purchase any type of quantity of product. Okay, and then there's the issue of taxes. This is about revenue for the state uh, to enjoy as well from the sale of any kind of cannabis-based products, right? How will you determine the, the taxing, whether there will be state taxes, whether you know, there will be you know, excise taxes, what? Well, we, in Colorado, we have to ask the voters to levy any tax on any product. So we're going to take a ballot initiative to the voters in the fall that asked, uh, that asked them to give us permission to levy an up to 15% excise tax mm -hmm. and an up to a 15% special sales tax. This is going to be used to make sure that we have the law enforcement in place, the public safety protections we have in place, the education about this product to our children, uh, those in middle school and high school who now may have uh, some sense that this is now a legal product and that they should be using this. That's simply not going to be the case, and we're going to make sure they're educated about that. Okay, so while it might be a legal product in the state of Colorado because you put it to the voters and the legislature is now crafting that uh, legislation, marijuana and growing it is still illegal under federal law. So how do you see the two kind of coinciding? Do you think this law that you're trying to craft will really ever make it to fruition? Well, the feds uh, have told us before under our medical marijuana dispensaries that they have certain guardrails they want in place. They want to make sure that these dispensaries are a thousand feet from a school or a church or anywhere that children can be. And we're going to be maintaining that uh, as we move into the recreational area. We want to make sure that this doesn't cross uh, interstate lines, that this product doesn't move to other parts of the country. And so that's why we are putting these robust regulatory uh, measures in mm -hmm. place. Because if that's not the case, we do expect uh, federal involvement. Hmm. Okay, um, Colorado, Colorado Representative uh, Dan Pabone, uh, thanks so much. And I'm sure we'll be talking to you again as we get closer to that January 2014 date. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. All right, thanks for your time.